Hello and welcome to another Wild Things Stay Wild at Home adventure. My name is Luke Strachan, I'm the CEO of Wild Things and this is... I'm Ellie, I'm the co-work manager at Wild Things. And together we're going to be taking a look today at garden birds. Now, garden birds are amazing. You can find them everywhere, they inhabit every continent of the planet. And um, you don't have to get far into nature to enjoy birds. Literally sitting at your window or sitting out in the garden is enough to spot some incredible garden birds. So we're just going to take a look for a place to settle down now and uh, we're going to show you some of the amazing things that we found over the years around birds. Where are we going to go Ellie? I think just over here. Yeah, looks good. All right. Brilliant. So here we are in the woods and we found a really beautiful spot near the village of Findhorn and um, we've brought out with us today uh, a variety of different curiosities from the world of birds. So this is a, a tawny owl. It's very difficult to tell whether they're male or female but I'd like to think this one is asterisk a female. Um, so it's fully grown. Um, it's also it's interesting to see how they're perfectly adapted for their environment. Uh, they're camouflaged. They've also got these special little feathers at the front here which enable them to fly silently. Um, so owls eat mice and voles and things like that. They've got these massive claws designed for picking up uh, the little rodents and obviously eating them. So one of the things that happens is that the owls will eat those mice and voles whole. Um, and obviously there's bits inside that the owl can't digest. So there's something called an owl pellet. And what an owl pellet is, is all of the bits um, of bone and fur that the owl can't digest. Um, it coughs up as a pellet. You could come across them and easily mistake it for uh, a dropping, a bird dropping of some kind, or, or you know, even a fox dropping, maybe, if you were, weren't sure about what you'd come across. Mm. But it's not, in fact, a dropping, but a more vomit? Like, more like vomit, yeah. Oh. <laughs> um, and inside there's actually some, some skulls, some bones. I can see the femur of a, um, of a mouse or a vole. Uh, it's really quite fascinating. What can we find out from, from looking at one? Um, well, you can find out which species of owl you might have nearby. Mm -hmm. um, so sometimes you can hear them as well. So you can, you can also tell from the sound. Um, you can tell if they're healthy. Unfortunately, this one um, wasn't healthy. I'm, mm. I'd like to think it was old age, but it was very skinny and not very well. Um, so it's, it's nice to know that there are plenty of voles and mice around for owls to eat and that the ecosystem is nice and healthy. And it's just fascinating. <laughs> <laughs> let's, let's move on because we've got quite a few things here. Um, what, what else could we take a look at here, Ellie? Okay, uh, we have some uh, skulls here are very different types of birds. So this um, is a buzzard, our most common bird of prey around here. And, and how is it that you know that's a, a buzzard? Um, well, the, the skull looks very similar to many uh, birds of prey. So it's actually the size um, that enables you to identify it. So it was seven centimetres by four centimetres. Um, some things to note, it's got very large eyes uh, these eye sockets here so that would be for um, spotting moving things even though it's really quite high up in the air it would, it would see a rabbit and be able to swoop down on it mm. um, it's got a very pointed beak uh, that obviously it can can rip into rabbits with um, and it too would have talons like our owl mm. as well no it's a beautiful skull that actually and um it's interesting to see the size of it and to see how much of a buzzard's head is actually made up of its eyes. It mostly seems to be yeah. made up of its eyes. Um, amazing. Um, so this one, by comparison, is a seabird. Um, so it might be, I, I'm not sure exactly which one, it's a very similar skull to a phalarope, um, but they're quite rare, so it could be a gull. Um, 
it's got some interesting adaptations for being a seabird. So it's got a long beak, which would be better for going into the water and getting fish. Mm-hmm. Um, it's also got a large nasal cavity here, and that's something unique to seabirds. So what they do is they drink salt water and they have salt glands which process out the fresh water so that they can drink mm. it. Uh, it's obviously got a reasonably small brain, this one, <laughs> compared to our buzzard. Yeah, it's quite a bit smaller. And you can see the differences are, are huge between those two different species of birds. They clearly, you can just tell by looking at them that they do completely different things in the environment. Mm. Definitely. And then um, this one here belongs to a blue tit. Um, you can... Tiny, isn't it's it? It's tiny. I actually have to be very careful not to accidentally crush it with my fingers. Oh. Um, so it's got a very small beak. It's not any kind of bird of prey, obviously. It's got a small beak for eating seeds and um, berries, things mm-hmm. like that. Mm-hmm. So it still needs to have quite a hard beak to be able to get into nuts and seeds. Mm. Um, yeah, it doesn't need to have a. It doesn't need to have big talons. Mm. Um, so a bu- uh, blue tit's feet would be designed for perching. So it would have three forwards, one backwards, and it would be designed for just hanging onto the tree and, and perching. Yes, and it's amazing actually just to have a look at these. Uh, if you don't mind, I can yeah. have a look here. So yes, just to see the the size of these against each other. Um, and obviously both from the, the avian family, but vastly different um, in terms of their adaptations, their size, mm. and, uh, and the various features of them. But yeah, it's fascinating, they're so light. So next up, we've had some fascinating skulls, an incredible taxidermy tawny owl. Um, and we've, we've got some nests here? Yes. So they all look quite different, Ellie. Um, perhaps you could tell us a little bit more about them? Yeah. Um... So in the same way that the birds have different beaks, depending on what they do, and different feet, um, they also make different nests depending on where they want to bring up their chicks. Mm -hmm. So some birds don't have a nest at all. Um, Lots of wading birds might make a very rustic nest in amongst uh, the stones on a beach. Mm -hmm. Uh, But these are nests that have been found and then hopefully uh, successfully used as a, as a family home um, and left behind. So um, this one is quite a special one in that it's really quite solid. It's um, the birds obviously been eating bits of wood and then spitting them back out. Um, and in this case, it's used its uh, chest to kind of make it into the right shape. So it's quite a solid nest. It would stand mm. up to a bit of um, wind. Okay, so we have some other nests here. Uh, this one's uh, some kind of tit. Um, I can see some feathers in it that are black and white. And from its size as well, I would suggest that it could be a, a long tail tit. This one is quite interesting in that the bird has been quite opportunistic. In this case, it's obviously near a sheep farm and it's found some wool to incorporate into its nest. Mm. So it's basically used whatever it could get its little beak on and help to make it into a home. I refer to these as uh, little bird sleeping bags. Wow. (laughs) Look how cosy that one is. Wow, that is, that looks so soft and snug, doesn't it? (laughs) It does. Uh, So in the same way that humans might use a down sleeping bag if they were going on an expedition to the top of the Cairngorms or Um, to somewhere really cold, like the North Pole. Um, This bird, which is a wren, has used feathers to line its nest. Mm. So up here we have a nest. This has been made in the top of the roof of a house. Um, So we believe this nest might be a house martin because we've seen some house martins flying around. And you can just about make out that it's made up of mud. And what's happened is those little birds have eaten the mud um, in small quantities and spat it back out again. So that is entirely stuck together with mud and bird spit. Famously, uh, swallows do this in in Asia and it's it's a prized soup, it's a delicacy, it's a bird nest soup. 
um, and they put um, abandoned buildings up just to harvest the swallow nests to make that soup. We can hear some, some cheeping and as they'll be waiting for their parents to return um, and give them some nice grubs so they'll be eating insects which they catch on the wing and then these birds once they're nice and big um, nice and fat they'll be making the journey to spend the winter in Africa so in southern Africa where they'll be flying about 200 miles each day the easiest way of telling the difference between swallows and martins is the shape of their tail so swallows have a very long forked tail um, with two forks to it, whereas a martin has a much shorter, stumpier one. We've taken a break between filming and um, we have come back to the house martin nest and you'll see just how far these house martin chicks have come along. They are absolutely beautiful and they are eagerly awaiting the return of their parents who have been feeding them diligently for the last month at least. We'll hopefully see a returning parent coming back soon. And here's the, the mother or the father. So we're all aware that birds have feathers and that feathers are something that mark out birds as an entirely different order of creature to mammals and reptiles and fish and so on. But feathers really are truly unique and fascinating product of evolution. Um, indeed, feathers began with the dinosaurs and fossil records do show that many dinosaurs which we once thought were scaly reptiles in fact had feathers and we believe that they may have had feathers for the same reasons that modern birds have feathers. So the first reason birds have feathers is of course flight. Feathers are extremely light and strong and they enable birds to, to carry themselves up into the air or indeed to swim beneath the surface of the water. Many seabirds, of course, oil their feathers, making them water resistant and keeping them warm in some very harsh environments. Secondly, the different plumage and colouring of feathers can create camouflage for the bird, allowing them to avoid predators. Feathers are also useful for feathering of birds' nests and keep their young warm. Feathers also play an extremely important role in the world of birds with regards to mating and are often used to attract a mate. And that's why we see with this example here of a uh, jay feather, the iridescence of those feathers is remarkable. And they signal to the female uh, that, that I, I'm somebody that, that you would want to get with. Hello! In today's activity pack is the stuff for making bird feeders. Birds are really lovely to see come into the garden and with these bird feeders you can encourage the birds to come directly outside your window or anywhere in the garden that you get a good view of them. One of the things you can do is you can watch which species of birds come and go but you can also watch how they interact with each other Maybe some are more brave than others. Maybe they're attempting to mate or fight. Or maybe they've managed to bring up some young into the world this summer. These bird feeders are very simple and they use natural materials like this pine cone. All we're gonna do is get the string and wrap it into the base bit of the pine cone. That's already pretty strong. You can also tie a knot in it to make it that little bit stronger. There we go. If you want to hang up the pine cone, you're going to need another knot at the top. There we go. Next, we're going to dip this pine cone in some lard or, uh, or vegetable fat. And the reason for that is that all of the birds, well, all animals, seek out fat in nature. 
um, so that they can keep themselves warm and they can survive through the winter. A lot of our garden birds are very small and it really helps them to have a layer of fat to insulate them. They can't find very much of this in, in nature normally, so they really are looking for it. Um, and it's actually the same reasons why us as humans might be a little bit too attracted to deep fried food and fatty foods, because it's very difficult to find in nature. So what we're gonna do, is get our pine cone and scrape it into the fat. Trying to get lots of that lovely fat on there. Brilliant. Next, we're going to use that as our cement and we're going to put it in the seeds. And again, the birds will be seeking out seeds, um, especially in summer and autumn. There is some natural fats in there um, and there's also some protein and well, basically all the things that the birds will need. So we dip it into there, get it nice and covered. And there we have it, a lovely fatty seedy bird feeder. Well everybody that's, that's it for this episode. Um, we hope you've learned lots of different things about birds. We really hope that you enjoy your bird feeder activity and that it brings loads of different feathered friends into your garden so that you can enjoy the great variety of different garden birds that live in Scotland. Um, we'll be back again next week with another video, another activity. Until then, stay wild at home.